What? You want to be in the video? Okay. Oh! Uh, guys, what is up? Abigail and I are going to be taking you through our first time <laughs> wiggling. I just you know what? Next time, next time, next time. You want me to give you a... I don't want you to give me nothing. Cue card? You got a cue card? What's up guys, Grant Garmsey here with our next video. Really excited about this one. This is our first tutorial. So I was a little nervous doing it, so bear with me, but I'm gonna walk through the entire process of making a glass vulture head. These vulture heads are a lot of fun to make. I've been making them for years. I started in college and it's just an image that has really followed me through my career. These pieces uh, are cool on their own, but they also end up on a lot of my sculptures. So stick with us till the end of the video and I'll tell you where this one ends up. So like anything, we start with the gather. I'm using the newspaper to just round out the piece. Now I've used a variety of colors. I use a lot of powders. So we've used a base coat of white and then we've put a, I think a copper uh, ruby over it. And so just getting a basic shape, getting that jack line established so we can see the back of the head. And that just kind of helps me get proportion. Now I've got Will with the other pipe, he's got uh, it looks like about one and a half gathers of glass that's been colored in white powder. Enamel white, I love to use Kugler colors, they're the best I think. So we add that to the top, just a little diamond shear action, cutting that off. And that is going to be where the beak of the bird transitions. Now you, of course you can make um, you can make the whole beak out of the same uh, head color, but what you're going to find is that if you want it to be a different color you're going to need to add that and if you roll it in powder or something it's not going to have that strong line that we hope so what I've done there is I've heated just the base of it where it comes together where the white meets the red and I'm kind of hipping it out a little bit just uh, trying to make it transition nicely and now I'm taking the diamond shears and I'm taking off a little bit of that glass it's uh I found that it's better to always take more than you uh, you need at first because we can always remove it but we, it's it's gonna be hard to add it back or at least it's gonna cause a big blob impact when you add more glass to it so I always take more at first and then we kind of take away slowly so now I'm just heating that piece back up getting that main body uh, shaped and now we've we flashed it I'm using actually parchofi sticks here to shape the vultures head I always like to get outside the bench so I can see it straight on you can try sculpting from the bench but it's very difficult and usually you end up with something that isn't symmetrical and uh, it might be a little skewed so I'm just putting in the jaw lines right there I'm just getting the basic structure right now I'm not trying to get detail I'm just literally getting in basic shape and that is really the key um, if you ever get to see me sculpt live, it's it's not a quick process, but it's not a slow process either. It's just kind of taking baby steps, and we kind of walk towards that realism factor. So I'm just using the parchofi sticks to get that shape in. I found that the parchofi sticks are better than just normal dowel rods. I used to get dowel rods, and they would just burn up within a couple blow slots. So uh, the parchofi sticks are great. They're like $15, and uh, I've had these now for about a year. So I'm just still just shaping them, and I'll do this probably for maybe six or seven minutes between flashes just to get that basic shape, and I'm constantly having uh, my assistant turn the piece just so I can see it from multiple angles. You always want to keep looking at it from the side, from the top, from the front, um, because what tends to happen and what happened to me when I was a beginning uh, glass artist is that I would just look at it from one direction and it would look great from that one direction and then I'd stand up and see it from the top or see it from the bottom and realize man this thing is all kinds of messed up so it's important that while you're sculpting it to continuously look around the piece to make sure it's looking good from all angles it's important that if you want to do like a muscle move like if you want to move glass around you heat it and then you take a flash in the glory hole and then you make make the move so I want it to like really be able to push and shape the glass if I want it to do just more of a surface technique I would just heat it with the torch and then actually do the move so right here I'm using the knife to get that basic shape of the beacon glass has memory so if we put those shapes in now when we pull on the beak it will extend that so we've got that basic shape it still doesn't look right and now we're using the uh, shears I've heated it 
and we're cutting it into shape. You can pull it sometimes, depends on the bird. Um, if we were doing a large pelican, I would pull it. But for something that's uh, more predator style, like a vulture, hawk, anything with a very sharp beak, I found the best way to do it is cut it. Now it will leave like a little line where you've cut that powder, but usually it's not very noticeable. And if it really bugs you, you can always add a little bit of powder to it and then just kind of heat it with a torch and lightly blend it in. After that, we, uh, we go for, these are just like little sculpting ball tools that I use and uh, Griffin Tool makes them, they're fantastic. And what I'm doing is I'm marking where the eyes should be. It's a little trick that I learned about looking through those ball tools and then when, that, uh, when you have the right spot, heating that and then digging your tweezers into it and pulling slowly to bring out some of the mass. If you pull too quick, you're gonna pull a stringer. So it's important that you go in firm and then you grab it and you pull really slow. And I do that on both sides of the piece. So remember that ball tool was there to not only look through it to see like, oh, that's where the eye should be, but also that it's even on both sides because there's nothing worse than a bird that has uneven eyes. So after that, heating those blobs up and then taking the knife and just pushing it back in. And now we have created literally an eye socket for our eye to be added. So right there, I've got some glass cane. I used to pull it from Color Bar, but now I just buy it pre-pulled and I just balled it up using the torch, put a little diamond shear line behind it. And now I have heated that pad that we just made and I'm going to push that in pretty firmly, pushing a little bit of air on it and it just snaps right at that jack line. And I do that on the other side as well. I always like to do what we call a price check. So before I've pushed this eye in, I'll have that ball. I'll look at the other eye and just make sure it's close enough in size. Cause it's, it's sometimes it, you know, it just happens. You got, you, you ball up a little too much and then you have an eye that's, a, you know, a little larger than the other one, but it will be noticeable when the piece comes out. Now that we've got those two eyes in, it's time to put in the beak uh, bone structure a little bit. So I'm using a knife right now. I go in with both sides to really push it together because we're gonna actually, after this, we're gonna put a hole through it. So I didn't get a video of me actually doing that, but I take a tungsten and I heat it and I push it through. Now we're using the knife to carve in the mouth line. The secret with a mouth line is I like to do one side at a time. I, I used to try to do it all in one, so I'd heat this whole face up and go for it, but it's, it's the wrong way to do it. You want to hit, hit one side, do it, flip the piece, do the other side, and then flip it again on the back and connect the two lines in the middle. That way your bird will have an even mouth all the way around. After that, I heat up the corners of the mouth and I take the, the edge of the knife and I just push up a little bit, causing a little bit of that skin to flare up and that kind of gives you a little bit of a mouth ring. After that, it's all texture time, and texture is my favorite part. Just heat and just messing around with the knife. I'm uh, I'm literally just rolling that knife to create uh, to create that skin texture, and I'll just go around the entire piece like that as much as I want. You can you can do the texture on the texture, or you can you can just do little lines. You can just like scratches, or it's pretty much whatever your preference is, but. Like this tool, I uh, one of the, the teacher had it and said, hey, you should try this. So we tried this and uh, it came out with a great texture. It might be for leather. It might be for making pasta. I know it's made for vulture skin making. That's what I know it's for. But I just rolled that on top of the knife marks and it just created this beautiful, natural, very grotesque kind of like vulture skin. If, I don't know if you've seen a vulture up close, but their skin is very gnarly. So I just kind of rolled over all that. But I'm also, I'm not just rolling it any which way. I'm actually thinking about how the skin would lay on the face, how gravity would affect it, how fur would be affected. So I use that now. I'm using like a grill brush pretty much. You can get this at Home Depot or a welding supply store. And I'm just lightly heating it and then pushing it. And that's kind of creating a little bit of a fur texture on it. And again, I'm thinking about the ways that this would actually be on the piece, on, on in, in nature. I was demoing in America's Georgia. Great school, great program. And now we're finishing up the final touches, which is to pull the beak. So just heating it and then before you flash, pulling it. Because again, we wanted that, that's a surface move. So we heat it and we do the move. Now after that, we add the jack line. 
Sculpting is very different from functional blowing, so we can add the jack line pretty late in the process and then just cut it in. So now at this point, the piece has gone into the garage and this is your final result. You can see the colors are starting to pop just because it's now a little cooler. That's how you do it. That is how you make a vulture head out of glass. Now, of course, there's many ways to do it. That's just my style. Take it or leave it. Just wanted to show you guys. But join us next week. I'm going to make the claws. That's going to be its own video. I'm going to make the tail and the body. That's going to be its own video. And I might even put it all together in that video too. I don't know. You'll just have to join me next time. And you guys just keep blowing glass and have a good one. Later, guys. Guys, what is up? First tutorial coming at you. I've got to move. I've got, I just can't. <laughs> this rig sucks.